This is the DJI Mavic Air 2, completely redesigned from the previous model. It actually now looks like a smaller version of the Mavic 2 Pro, only in some ways, it's actually better. It's slightly heavier and slightly larger than the previous model, but all in all still feels really small, compact, and lightweight. It's actually about 40% lighter than the Mavic 2 Pro. It's also got an entirely new controller design. It's a little bit bigger than before, but the phone now attaches on top instead of the bottom and has this new design for doing that. It definitely feels a little bit bigger, but I'm kind of curious to take it out into the field and test it out. Overall, I'm super stoked to get this thing up in the air. I guess the only question for me right now is, where am I going to fly it? Welcome to the middle of freaking nowhere. I figured it was probably best to test this thing out in the middle of nowhere because obviously right now, most places are in shutdown, so I wanted to be safe, so we came out here into the middle of freaking nowhere. Um, it's hotter than crap, but I have the DJI Mavic Air 2, which I am super excited about testing. You can tell it's definitely a lot lighter than the Mavic 2 Pro, which is pretty neat, but it has that same similar aesthetic to the Mavic 2 Pro. You can tell that DJI really um, has kind of figured out the style and design um, that they like in these drones, and I don't blame them, I like it as well. So aside from the fact that it looks like the baby sister of the Mavic 2 Pro, there are some features in here that make this thing quite a bit more powerful than the Mavic 2 Pro, but there's also some things that's missing that you might want to pay extra for to get with the Mavic 2 Pro. So today I'm going to walk through some of my favorite features, and then at the end of this video I'll talk about some of the differences and who this kind of drone is designed for. So let's jump into some of those professional features now and uh, let's check this thing out. All right, so let's talk about features. I think the biggest feature for this, one of the biggest changes, is the fact that it's switched from Wi-Fi on the previous model to OcuSync 2.0 on this model, which basically means it's gonna allow you to fly further. I think the range on the previous model was about 2.4 miles, a little over two miles, but I found that to be heavily reliant on line of sight and making sure you were in an open area, um, and occasionally I would get a drop signal on it. Uh, but with this, um, it's gonna fly much, much further. It's using some of the technology of the higher-end drones, so I I think this thing's rated up to 10 kilometers, which is about 6.2 miles. Honestly, this thing's probably gonna fly further than you need, and um, now connection issues won't really be a problem. All right, so next feature is this thing takes 48 megapixel photos. That is freaking nuts. I think the next best drone in the DJI lineup shoots like 20 megapixel photos. If you're into aerial photography, 48 megapixels is gonna allow you to get incredible shots. Um, if you're somebody who prints high resolution photos and you don't wanna worry about losing any quality, this thing's gonna be amazing. Um, also, if you're somebody that likes to crop into your photos, obviously you don't need 48 megapixels for Instagram, but um, with 48 megapixels, you can actually take pretty wide shots and then you can crop in and still have really high resolution images. So another thing I really like about this is it has a whopping 34 minutes of battery life, which is incredible. The previous one had about 21 minutes, um, which is tough sometimes to get all the shots you want. You really need to be efficient when you get your drone up in the air. Uh, with 34 minutes, it's gonna give you an extra, you know, 13 minutes of flight time, which is incredible for um, kind of looking around a little bit or going further. Um, so that's definitely a huge feature of this. It's a few more minutes than the Mavic 2 Pro, which is really cool. So that definitely puts this drone, in my opinion, um, up on a pretty level playing field with the um, Mavic 2 Pro, and it really differentiates itself from the other drones that are in the lineup, like the Mavic Mini and Mavic Spark on the more affordable end. 
All right, and some of the other features that they've added that are really cool is they've added an improved ability to do hyperlapses in camera. They've added this new thing called air sense that allows you to detect if other drones or aircraft are flying in the area. So you'll get a warning on your controller um, so if other people are flying so you don't crash. Um, they've also added an improved active track feature. So if you are trying to track a subject or a car or somebody moving or you're doing action sports, that will help you get perfect, nice locked in shots. Um, yeah, they've added a bunch of features in this thing and it's pretty incredible and I am freaking stoked to get this thing off the ground. And one more thing I just forgot which is actually like a huge really really cool feature is they added 4K60 to this thing. So um, this feature does is not included in the Mavic 2 Pro. It's actually only available otherwise in the Phantom 4 Pro. So that's a pretty high end feature that's now packed in a fairly affordable drone. So I'm pretty stoked on that. All right, so I'm kind of just cruising around right now and uh, it's kind of a little bit windy, I'm not gonna lie, but I'll be honest, this thing does pretty well. Another thing I noticed when I took off is the, um, the props, they've made them a little bit quieter. It's not as loud as it used to be, which is kind of nice because I feel like the last drone had this really high pitched kind of screeching noise and it's definitely gotten a lot quieter, which is cool. Oh, rah! Brutal. Alright, let's go find another location. Not gonna lie, the controller is growing on me. At first I wasn't sure if I'd like it because um, I feel like the button configuration is a little bit different. I'm used to on the top here. Um, I'm used to like record on the left hand side and where's the other controller? Um, record on the left, I guess it's buried. Record on the left hand side and photos on the right. So now it's a little bit different, but um, yeah, the ergonomics of it in my hand feels so much better. It doesn't feel as flimsy. There isn't those weird um, little sections along the bottom that fold out. Um, yeah, definitely easier to get the phone in there, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, and the battery life on this thing lasts quite a while. I've been shooting with it all day and it's still four bars, which is awesome. Cool, so one of the other features I wanted to test out, I was poking around through the app and also through the new specs. It has a new active track feature. They've upgraded it from before. Apparently now it's um, it has a better, an easier time tracking subjects. If something goes behind an object or whatever, it can lock back onto that subject. Um, there's apparently an improved POI mode as well. So it's essentially all of those, um, those kind of fun modes that um, are built into the app that allow you to do things like orbit, um, track subjects, all of those features, they're calling it. There's a new app also um, for that you use to connect the drone to uh, called DJI Fly. And so, yeah, there's a, the new section's called Quick Shot. So I think I'm gonna jump in here right now and test some of these out. To be honest, I haven't used a whole lot of these before. I never really used them on, the, um, the, on my Mavic 2 Pro, but I do see a lot of use in them. I think they can be pretty cool, good for beginners and potentially. Um, people that have more experience. So I'm gonna give them a shot and see how they look. All right guys, this is pretty funny. I'm using my phone right now to record audio. I'm doing a screen recording so you guys can see the screen. Rocket, circle, helix, helix, wow. That's pretty sick. Asteroid, boomerang, circle. Let's just do that. All right. Oh, it already, oh, that's pretty cool. It knew exactly where I was. Three, I'll two, press start. One. And what's it gonna do? Oh, let's see how well it tracks me. Hey, that's pretty cool. I'm not just saying this guys, I'm actually honestly pretty impressed. I am pretty far away. And I'm going pretty fast. Let me start running.
All right, guys, I've been flying drones for a long time. And I remember when this technology first came out, it would constantly lose tracking on whatever the focus was. They definitely made this a lot better. I mean, it hasn't, it hasn't come off me once. I'd actually use this feature. This is pretty sick. What I'm trying to do and what I usually do with drone shots to get really good ones is I try to find a foreground and a background. A lot of times if you just shoot something that's really far away, it doesn't really look that good. You kind of want to try to get um, foreground, something in the, in the foreground that's moving and the background and that'll give you kind of this parallax effect but I think it kind of is the key to like epic drone shots. So one thing I'm noticing right now is that on the Mavic 2 Pro, I have the ability to change the aperture. I can shoot in aperture priority, shutter priority. There's more fine tuned settings within the app. Um, it's a little bit more basic in this app. You don't have the ability to adjust the aperture. It's kind of locked in. So I kind of like the ability to do that because for me, when I put ND filters on the front of the drone, um, sometimes it's not perfect. And with the um, ability to change the aperture, you can kind of do micro adjustments to get the perfect uh, exposure. Um, this has a fixed aperture, so you can't, um, you can't change the aperture. All right, so this is super ridiculous, but um, there's not a whole lot going on out here because um, we're out in the middle of nowhere, but I thought really quickly it'd be cool to do a 4K60 test, so I'm gonna do slow motion. Um, I'm just gonna take off running. I'm gonna control it myself. 4K60, here it is. All right guys, so after using the drone for the entire day, I'm starting to get a little bit better of an idea of who this drone is designed for. I think they've honestly placed it perfectly in between the Mavic Mini and the Mavic 2 Pro. Um, there's a lot of features on it that are a lot better than the Mavic Mini. Um, there's a lot of features on it that aren't quite as good as the Mavic 2 Pro. Um, so let's kind of talk about who, this, who should upgrade to this drone, who this drone is designed for, kind of overall impressions. So um, after using this thing, I think the Mavic Mini is a great um, beginner drone. If you're getting into um, drones and you want to do a little bit of aerial photography and filmmaking, I think it's great. It works off of Wi-Fi signal, so the range isn't super far, but it's also pretty affordable for a drone, which is really cool. So if, you're, if you've never flown a drone before and you kind of want to dip your toes into the world, I think you should definitely check check out the Mavic Mini. If you're somebody who maybe already has the Mavic Mini or you um, already have experience flying drones and you want something that you're like, I actually want to get high quality 4K footage for my YouTube videos, for my um, real estate company, for, for whatever, if you want to start dabbling into that world but you're like, I don't want to full send on something that's a lot more expensive then I think that this drone is actually perfect for you. If you're somebody that's into aerial photography, this drone is also perfect for you. 40 megapixel photos is freaking nuts. I think the best, the next best drone in the lineup shoots 20 megapixel photos, so the fact this thing shoots 48 is completely crazy. So aerial photography, hands down for sure. Um, some of the other features, I love the fact that it has 4K60, super, super cool. Um, that looked, the footage looked super good from that. And overall, honestly, looking through all the footage of my laptop, it all looks really good from the Mavic Air. I mean, it's, it's really well done. 
Um, like I said before earlier too, massive, the upgrade from Wi-Fi to um, OcuSync is huge. I had the old Mavic Air and I found that the, for me, like professionally, I wanted it because the size was small, but after getting it, I, I remember realizing that it wasn't enough for the stuff that I was doing, so I really enjoy the fact that um, it's got OcuSync in it now and the range is plenty. I never had any connection issues all day. I never lost a signal or anything. So if you're somebody that's a professional, a professional filmmaker, you want to fine tune tiny little settings and things and you want the best image possible, I still think things like the Mavic 2 Pro, uh, the Mavic 2 Zoom are amazing drones and I think those are probably the drones you should get. Um, the ability to change the aperture in the Mavic 2 Pro is huge. You can't do that on the Mavic Air 2. So that was something I noticed right away. There isn't the ability to go into like shutter priority or aperture priority mode or any of those things. Um, you basically just turn on the manual settings to fly the drone um, and you can fine tune the manual settings but it, it doesn't have the degree of uh, customization and um, like the detailed settings that you can do with something that higher end but that makes sense because it's a lot more expensive drone but that being said you know I looked through all the footage I think uh, this drone with an ND filter put on top of it would be incredible the footage already looks really 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 good right out of the drone I think if you tossed an ND filter on it would look super super nice that being said overall I'm kind of left um, a little bit torn on you know, for me as a professional filmmaker, which tool I'd want to use. Um, I honestly had a lot of fun playing with the Mavic Air 2. Um, it's 40% lighter than the Mavic 2 Pro, so it's pretty light. Um, it, uh, the footage from it looks amazing. It kind of packs down into a tiny little package when I'm carrying it. Um, and I love that portability of it. The quality is there, and yeah, I guess I'm asking myself, do I need the extra um, features on the Mavic 2 Pro for the additional weight and I guess that is the biggest question for you guys as well um, and I guess you know that choice is kind of up to you but overall I'd say I'm pretty impressed with it um, they really took this thing and cranked it up to a um, unbelievable level and um, yeah super super stoked with that guys I'm gonna head back to the city it's really really hot out here um, hope you enjoyed this uh, yeah links are below for all the drones and uh, like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and uh, see you guys soon.